Now let us move on to the chemical properties of metals. To learn about the chemical properties of metals, take samples of aluminium, copper, iron, lead, magnesium, zinc and sodium to do this activity. Hold any of the samples taken above with a pair of tongs and burn over a flame. Repeat with the other metal samples except sodium. Hold samples with a pair of tongs and burn over a flame. Collect the product formed. Let the product and the metal surface cool down. Which metals burn easily? Sodium burns in air. Magnesium burns on heating. Aluminium, copper, iron, lead and zinc do not burn easily. How does the metal surface appear after burning? Metal surface turns black on heating. Are the products soluble in water? Only sodium oxide is soluble in water. Other products are not soluble in water. Let us look at the reaction of metals with oxygen. Almost all metals react with oxygen to form metal oxide. But the reactivity differs for different metals. Sodium and potassium are the most reactive metals. Sodium reacts with oxygen in air at room temperature to form sodium oxide. Hence, sodium is stored under kerosene oil to prevent its reaction with oxygen, moisture and carbon dioxide. 4Na plus O2 gives 2Na2O. Most metal oxides are insoluble in water, but some of these dissolve in water to form alkalis. Example, sodium oxide and potassium oxide dissolve in water to produce alkalis as follows. Na2O plus H2O gives 2NaOH. K2O plus H2O gives 2KOH. Magnesium does not react with oxygen at room temperature, but on heating, magnesium burns in air with intense light and heat to form magnesium oxide. 2Mg plus O2 on heating gives 2MgO. Zinc burns in air only on strong heating to form zinc oxide. 2Zn plus O2 on heating gives 2ZnO. Iron does not burn even on strong heating, but iron filings burn vigorously when sprinkled in the flame of the burner. 3Fe plus 2O2 on heating gives Fe3O4. Copper is least reactive and it does not burn, but on heating the hot metal is coated with a black colored layer of copper oxide. 2Cu plus O2 on heating gives 2CuO. Aluminium develops a thin oxide layer when exposed to air. 4Al plus 3O2 gives 2Al2O3. Now let us try to understand the term anodized panels. Anodizing is a process of forming a thick oxide layer of aluminium. Aluminium develops a thin oxide layer when exposed to air. This aluminium oxide coat makes it resistant to further corrosion. The resistance can be improved by making the oxide layer thicker. In this technique, aluminium article is used as an anode. Electrolyte used is dilute sulfuric acid. The anode reaction results in formation of a black colored thin film of aluminium oxide on the surface of anode. 
by putting appropriate dyes in the electrolytic bath, colored surface with decorative finish can be achieved. Kitchen articles like anodized pressure cookers, anodized pans and also frames of sliding windows are the applications of anodizing techniques. Metal oxides are usually basic in nature but some metal oxides such as aluminium oxide and zinc oxide react with both acids as well as bases to produce salt and water. Hence, they are called as amphoteric oxides. Al2O3 plus 6HCl gives 2AlCl3 plus 3H2O. Aluminium oxide reacts with acid to form salt and water, hence it is a basic oxide. Al2O3 plus 2NaOH gives 2NaAlO2, that is, sodium aluminate plus H2O. Here, it reacts with a base to give salt and water, hence it behaves like an acidic oxide. Let us see how metals react with water. Let us look at the activity. Take the samples of sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, iron, zinc to perform the activities given below. Put some pieces of samples taken separately in beakers half filled with cold water. Which metals react with cold water? Potassium, sodium and calcium reacted with cold water. Did any metal catch fire in water? Potassium and sodium catch fire when immersed in water. Does any metal start floating after some time? Yes, calcium starts floating. Metals like potassium and sodium react vigorously with cold water. Sodium reacts with water to evolve hydrogen which immediately catches fire producing a lot of heat. This is an exothermic reaction. 2K plus 2H2O gives 2KOH plus H2 gas is evolved plus heat energy. 2Na plus 2H2O gives NaOH plus H2 gas is evolved plus heat energy. Calcium reacts with water less vigorously. Hence, the heat evolved is not sufficient for hydrogen to catch fire. Instead, calcium starts floating because the bubbles of hydrogen gas formed stick to the surface of the metal. Ca plus 2H2O gives CaOH twice plus H2 gas is evolved. Put the metals that did not react with cold water in beakers half filled with hot water. Note your observations. Magnesium reacts with hot water to form magnesium hydroxide and hydrogen. Magnesium also starts floating since the bubbles of hydrogen gas stick to its surface. Write the equation for this reaction. Mg solid plus 2H2O liquid gives MgOH twice aqueous plus hydrogen gas. For the metals that did not react with hot water, arrange the apparatus as shown and observe the reaction with steam. Metals like aluminium, iron and zinc do not react either with cold or hot water, but they react with steam to form metal oxide and hydrogen. 2Al plus 3H2O gives Al2O3 plus 3H2. 3Fe plus 4H2O gives Fe3O4 plus 4H2. Metals like gold, silver and copper do not react with water at all.
Now let us see how metals react with acids. Metals react with acids to give salt and hydrogen gas. But do all metals react in the same manner? Let us find out. Activity Take the metal samples of iron, zinc, aluminium, copper, magnesium, etc. in separate test tubes. Add dilute hydrochloric acid in each of them. Now observe the formation of bubbles carefully. Which metals reacted vigorously with dilute hydrochloric acid? Magnesium, aluminium, zinc and iron react vigorously. Rate of formation of bubbles reduces in order like aluminium, zinc, then iron. Metals react with dilute hydrochloric acid to form metal chloride and hydrogen gas. In the above activity, the rate of formation of bubbles was fastest in case of magnesium. The reactivity decreases in the order magnesium is more reactive than aluminium, more reactive than zinc, more reactive than iron. Mg plus 2 HCl gives MgCl2 plus H2. 2 Al plus 6 HCl gives 2 AlCl3 plus 3 H2. Fe plus 2 HCl gives FeCl2 plus H2. Zn plus 2 HCl gives ZnCl2 plus H2. No bubbles are seen in case of copper. This shows that copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Metals also react with sulfuric acid to form metals sulfate and hydrogen gas. Fe plus H2SO4 gives FeSO4 plus H2. Zn plus H2SO4 gives ZnSO4 plus H2. Mg plus H2SO4 gives MgSO4 plus H2. Reaction with nitric acid. Hydrogen gas is not evolved when a metal reacts with nitric acid as it is a strong oxidizing agent. It oxidizes the hydrogen produced to water and itself gets reduced to any of the nitrogen oxides N2O, NO, NO2. But magnesium and manganese react with dilute HNO3 to evolve hydrogen gas. Look at this table. It summarizes the reaction of metals with air, water and acids. Let us look at the reactions of metals with solutions of other metal salts. Let us look at one activity. Take a clean copper wire and an iron nail. Put the copper wire in a solution of magnesium chloride and an iron nail in the solution of copper sulfate. Record your observation after some time. The iron nail gets coated with a reddish brown color of copper and the blue color of copper sulfate solution fades out. In this reaction, more reactive iron has displaced copper which is less reactive from the copper sulfate solution. This reaction is known as displacement reaction. Give the balanced chemical equation for the above reaction. CuSO4 plus Fe gives FeSO4 plus Cu. There is no change seen in the copper wire. Why? Copper is less reactive than magnesium, so it cannot displace magnesium. A more reactive metal can displace a less active metal from its compound in a solution. Metal A plus salt solution B gives salt solution A plus metal B. Now let us see 
how metals react with non-metals. We have seen the reactions of metals with number of reagents. Also, the reactivity differs with different metals. Why do metals react in this manner? The reactivity of different metals are different. Do noble gases react? Why? They do not react. They are chemically inactive. Let us look at the electronic configuration of metals and non-metals. It will help us to understand the reactivity of different elements and formation of different compounds. We have learnt that noble gases have a completely filled valenced shell, hence are chemically inactive. Sodium is a silver coloured metal that reacts so violently with water that flames are produced due to formation of hydrogen gas. Chlorine, a non-metal, is a greenish coloured gas which is so poisonous that it was used as a weapon in World War I. When chemically bonded together, these two dangerous substances form a compound sodium chloride so safe that we eat it every day. Let us see formation of sodium chloride. We know that sodium atom has one electron in its outermost shell. If it loses one electron from its M shell, then its L shell becomes the outermost shell to acquire a stable octet. The nucleus of this atom still has 11 protons, but the number of electrons has become 10. So there is a net positive charge giving us a sodium cation Na+. On the other hand, chlorine has 7 electrons in its outermost shell and requires one more electron to complete its octet. Thus, the electron lost by sodium is taken up by chlorine. After gaining one electron, its K, L and M shells have all together 18 electrons, but the nucleus still has 17 protons. This leads to the formation of chloride anion Cl-. Both these elements have a give and take relation between them. Sodium and chloride ions being oppositely charged attract each other and are held by strong electrostatic forces of attraction to exist as sodium chloride NaCl resulting in formation of an electrovalent bond or an ionic bond. It should be noted that sodium chloride exists as aggregates of oppositely charged ions in definite geometrical shape as shown. Thus, the bonds which are formed by such a give and take of electrons are called as ionic or electrovalent bonds. The compounds formed in this manner by the transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal are known as ionic compounds or electrovalent compounds. Similarly, the chemical compound that is formed by mutual sharing of one or more pairs of electrons between the two combining atoms is called a covalent compound. Example, water, HCl, etc. Properties of ionic compounds To learn about the properties of ionic compounds, let us perform the following activity. Take samples of sodium chloride, potassium iodide, barium chloride and observe. What is the physical state of these salts? Solids. Take a small amount of a sample on a metal spatula and heat directly on the flame. Also, try to dissolve the samples in water, petrol and kerosene. Are they soluble? Samples are soluble in water and insoluble in solvents such as kerosene and petrol. Prepare an electrolytic cell by connecting the carbon electrodes to the positive and negative of the battery cell. 
also connect a bulb in the circuit as shown. Put the electrodes into the salt solution electrolyte of one salt. What do you observe? The bulb glows. General properties of ionic compounds are Ionic compounds are solids and hard due to strong force of attraction between positive and negative ions. They are generally brittle and break into pieces when pressure is applied. Ionic compounds have high melting and boiling points as a considerable amount of energy is required to break the strong intermolecular attraction. They are generally soluble in water and insoluble in solvents such as kerosene, petrol, etc. Ionic compounds in the solid state do not conduct electricity because the movement of ions in the solid state is not possible due to their rigid structure, but they conduct electricity in the molten state. The conduction of electricity through a solution involves the movement of charged particles. A solution of an ionic compound in water contains ions which move to the opposite electrodes when electricity is passed through the solution.